Okay. <laughs> the question was basically, you know, we have taken these discs and an array of disc. How do we fabricate them? How is the sample made? Uh, it turns out that the fabrication of these uh, devices is an interesting aspect of it. We will actually uh, spend a little bit of time next week. So in this week, you know, I mean, because you have not asked this question when I talked about the splitting resonators or all these, you know, metal dielectric structures. I mean, there's a lot of nano fabrication involved when we want to fabricate nano structures. And I'll give I'll give you a glimpse of what can be done. Okay, in the next week, I'll just do a short run on that. Okay, so yeah, so I won't answer that question right now, but wait for the next week for this. Okay, so uh, so. Yeah, I just talked about how we can improve gain, which is an important aspect, you know, if you want to have nanoscale lasing. Now, uh, in this lecture, I want to address another aspect of nanoscale lasing, that is the cavity. So I said that, you know, you, you have to make the cavity as small as possible, and there are various approaches. Initially, we had this single individual cavities, you know, micro disc or, you know, coarsial, dial coarsial uh, structures and so on. And eventually, we also are exploring about, you know, uh, arrays of nano antennas. But is there anything else we can do? Okay. So in my group, we have been thinking about it f in the last few years in this direction. And so uh, the core of it is uh, what I've shown already in the past. So we showed a disk like this. And I said that you can confine electromagnetic energy inside that. And it turns out that, I mean, it's a little bit of an additional information, but it turns out that when you have a system like that, we call it an Hermitian system. It essentially means that I can represent by a matrix which is having uh, real values. And the eigenvalues are real, essentially. Okay. And you have a Hermitian system, so eigenvalues are real and they are observable in the reality, in, in uh, practical life. But when we come to a uh, nanoscale system, so wherein the antenna is small, the electromagnetic energy is going to spread out. It's leaking into the neighborhood right so in this case uh, the if you write out the the wave equation and write out the hamiltonian and so on you'll see that the eigenvalues of the hamiltonian are actually complex what it means is in a laser you would want a perfect laser is something that has a very narrow line width right and we understand when we have a resonance, we know that the line width corresponds to the loss. If you have a very high Q factor, you have very narrow line width. Now, the problem is if you come to nanoscale structures, like the one I have shown, the energy spreads out, the eigenvalue becomes complex. That means that the width of the line is not really going to be very small. So it becomes a challenge to actually get high quality, high Q factors. Okay, if you have a simple nanostructure, single nanostructure, the width cannot be very small. The width of the emission cannot be very small. So in our group, we started looking at it. And there's a lot of work that has happened in the optics community in the last 10, 15 years, wherein they try to combine gain loss, gain and loss. So we understand what is a gain, what is a loss in a bulk structure, right? We know that. So we started looking at, you know, a possibility of building a cavity which combines gain and loss. Okay. The reason for that is, you know, all loss is always thought of as something that should be avoided. Because if you have loss, that means the, the line width is going to be large, especially for emission, we don't like it. Okay. There can be different types of loss. One is the material loss, because that we have studied in great detail, but there can also be other types of loss called radiative loss and so on. And we don't want that to be, you know, significant. But then we started looking at, you know, if you can have lasing, if you combine these gain and loss nanostructures. And so it turns out that there are some interesting properties that can be observed when you have the refractive index of this form. So if you have a refractive index, let's say we have a refractive index as a function of position. How can you have a refractive index as a function of position? Well, think of a photonic crystal consisting of various materials. So as a function of position, you have the refractive index, which is changing. And now I have a property in such a way that the refractive index is equal to its complex conjugate also, you know, minus of x, you know, basically what it means is the refractive index, it's a complex number, we know that, and that complex number should obey this relation. And what it specifically means is that if you have the real part of refractive index in the as an even function, even function means on the positive side, whatever I have in the negative negative part of negative x axis, also, I should have a same thing. So I, sh I should have a mirror symmetry. So it's an even function in, in real part. 
And the imaginary part of it, if it is a complex function, like I have loss and then I have gain, we understand that gain and loss are opposite, right? So imaginary part of the refractive index changes. When, when I say that, you know, let's say the refractive index is 3.4 plus j, that means it's a loss. But if I say 3.4 minus j, that means it's gain. So if I have exactly the opposite type of, you know, I have a loss in one side and then gain in the other side, if I have such a combination, it turns out that there are some interesting properties that can be observed. So this system will essentially turn out to be non-Hermitian, but even though it's non-Hermitian, it will have real eigenvalues. And that is the crux of it. There's a lot of interest in this in, in, in the area called as PT symmetry in optics. If you're interested, you can look at it. But otherwise, just to understand, you know, what sort of flexibility that nanophotonics offers, I want to show you this. So if you look at the original ideas, we simply took refractive index as something constant. Then we understand that, no, no, it's constant. But if I engineer resonances, I can actually modify my refractive index. So we have done, we have studied that in the, you know, in the photonic crystals, we have studied that in the nanoparticles and so on. Now I'm talking about one more dimension of freedom. Just don't take the real part only. You can even consider the imaginary part. We can think of structures which combine real and imaginary parts of refractive, in, uh, sorry, yeah, complex refractive index. We can engineer that and we can actually get additional degrees of freedom. That is something that is exciting. Okay. So what we did was, you know, we proposed a structure of this form. You know, you can have, let's say, a loss material and a gain material separated by refractive in, uh, by a spacer. If I have such structure and I have them in an array, like nano antenna array that I showed in the last lecture, you can have some interesting effects. Okay. It turns out that this sort of a structure has more degrees of freedom than a traditional just a nano antenna array. Okay. The reason is the gain loss in the vertical direction here is actually giving you uh, different responses. For example, we studied what happens when an electromagnetic wave is incident on a material, right? It scatters, it reflects and so on. But if you have the same wave incident on a gain medium, what happens? The reflection is going to be different because the impedance of the material is different. So you can have asymmetric reflection and transmission when you have light incident on such a structure. And you also have, you know, essentially the refractive index is, you know, whatever we have taken here. So you can have mere resonances in this structure. And if you have mere resonances, you can actually have interesting direct, directional, directional properties from there. And then you also have, because there's a lattice, there's a, this lattice resonance which can actually give, very, give you very high cues. So when you have a combination of all of this, we can have interesting lasing properties from this structure. Okay. You might ask me, how will you get gain and loss like this? In my case, you know, what we think is, you, loss is simply a medium with, let's say, intrinsic doping. It has less gain. And then a gain is basically with a P-type doping. When you have such a structure, similar material with a different doping, separated by a spacer, there are ways actually by which you can actually create a thin dielectric spacer in between. You should have uh, this sort of a property that is obeyed. So in this case, in the vertical axis, if you look at it, you see that, Along the, let's say if this is my Z or Z, on the positive Z you have gain, on the negative Z you have loss. So the imaginary part is an even function, sorry, odd function. And the real part is, this is the same material, indium, gallium indium phosphide, let's say. The same material, so the real part is going to be symmetric or, you know, even function. The imaginary part is going to be odd function. So there are a lot of interesting properties. So, you know, my effort here is not really, I, I don't think you will understand a lot of details here. But it's all right. Just try to understand the bigger picture. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to, my goal is not to teach you the details here, but to expose you to the various uh, interesting avenues that people are pursuing. All right. So if you have this sort of a structure, we can do some interesting things. And, you know, uh, all of us, you know, I, I assume that some of you who are watching this course are interested in research. And research definitely means that you look at the current state of affairs, or current state of literature, and look at what else is possible. And this is one of the ways you can think about. You understand gain, you understand loss, so we combine that. So that's how we do research and we discover newer phenomena. All right. So this is an example of that. So when you have a structure like this, we, we calculated this. And this is something, again, you know, I don't think I can explain this in detail. But you have an array like that. You calculate the reflection and transmission coefficients and some interesting properties come out. And we call them as spectral singularities. So essentially what happens here is if you look, uh, we, we varied the parameters. We calculated what happens to transmission and reflection in the certain wavelength range and as a function of the gap. 
And what we see is for a certain definite gaps, you have very, very large transmission. So this is a color picture. So wherein this white means basically large number here. It's a logarithmic scale as well. So you see at a particular wavelength and a particular gap, you have very large emission that is coming out. And if you look at the Q factor of the line, it's more than 10 power 5. So I re remember I mentioned the Q factor of the lasing emission that was experimental value and it was 2750 I believe. But here now we are having a Q factor which is of the order of 10 power 5 in theory. But even if the structure exhibits a Q factor of something like 5000 or more, and that's really going to help in actually reducing the requirements for lasing. Right? So and the interesting part here is this is also very much robust to the gap. We don't, we, we don't need to have a precise exact gap, but if we even have slightly different gaps, you will still see lasing. Okay, and this is a transmission spectrum, and you can actually look at the reflection spectrum as it, it shows a similar trend. Whether you from the come from the gain side or loss side, there are some differences, but overall you see a very sharp peak, and that is what is shown here. So the transmission and reflection for exhibits a very very sharp uh, peak. Okay, and that is something that is very exciting about this structure, and we are thinking about how to fabricate it and so on. Okay. So this is one aspect that is interesting. A more recent work from our group is actually a phase gradient metasurface, which can exhibit tunable, uh, tunable scattering properties. So remember all the, the, the way I, I, I talked about why it is necessary to have tunable properties, right? And now we wanted to combine this gain loss structures that we have seen in the, in the previous slide. And we want to exhibit uh, tunability. How can we exhibit tunability from this? Well, you pump it. If you have degre different degrees of pumping, you're going to have different gain loss balances and that will actually give you scattering properties. An example of that is, let's say I have a structure containing a phase gradient. Basically, I have nano antennas with different direction, different sizes arranged in a gradient like this. And then I have uh, I incident light on that. Okay, From the loss side, if I have light incident, all of it, mo most of it will come into the zeroth order. But if I come from the gain side here, if I shine light, a lot of it turns out to be in the first diffraction order. So what I'm doing is whether if I come from the gain or loss side, my directional scattering properties are different. And why is this important? Well, it is important because <laughs> we, we are able to engineer the directional scattering. So can I pump it and change the direction of emission? That becomes a very interesting problem. Okay. And we showed some details about, you know, what is the efficiencies of it. We have calculated. If you are interested in the details, you can go into look at this paper. Uh, that we published last year but in effect i want to the message i want to leave for you is there's a lot of possibilities even though the field has been for about 50 years now 1962 was the first demonstration of edge emitting laser but there's a lot of things that are new and current and a lot of work that needs to be done all right so i hope that you know some of this is exciting to you and if you're working on that we can definitely talk about it all right so thank you very much for your attention I think I'll stop this lecture here and this will also close my discussion on the tunable and active matter surfaces. And next week we will talk about how a atom interacts with a cavity. So far, you know, we understood how basic materials work. We understood how cavities are designed and then how, you know, uh, the gain happens in a cavity, how we can tune them. Next week I want to talk about how a dipole or an atom interacts with a the cavity. There are some interesting uh, phenomena that occur at the nanoscale. So there are some interesting effects. We'll talk about it. And then with that, I'll also talk a little bit about the fabrication of nanostructures. And so that will co close my discussion about nanophotonics part of it. And so that will be the week eight of the course. And after I finish that, next week onwards, I'll talk about, not next week, week nine onwards, we will talk about the quantum part. What happens if you have few photons, all right? We will actually establish some basic principles of what happens. So that will be the agenda. So with that, I would like to stop my uh, discussion. Any, any, any questions? If not, then yeah, thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.